So IPF is an, an acronym. It stands for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is a bunch of quite silly words really. And all it means is that the lung thickens and becomes stiff. Your patient can't breathe in properly. And unfortunately, it's, it's fatal. And in most people who get this disease will be dead within two and a half or three years. That's the average time of dying. What we know about the connective tissue that fills the lungs of IPF patients is that it has the same tensile strength as aluminium. Imagine trying to crush a can of, an empty can of Coke, put a straw in it and try to blow it up through the straw. Uh, and that's what it's like to breathe when you have particularly end stage uh, pulmonary fibrosis. So it's a, it's a horrible disease and at the moment we don't really understand how it happens or how we can treat it. The best we can hope for, and even that we can't really achieve most of the time, is to hold people the same. We can't ever make them better. Last year, um, I realised that I just really couldn't get the most, any breath for the most simplest tasks. It felt like I, that my lungs would just stop and like go like hard, and I just couldn't sort of get the, to get that air right down. I've always been a very fit person and um, you know a person that uh, used to be a gym instructor I used to teach also I did uh, teach water aerobics and I just thought this is strange and I've never been a smoker never smoked. We provide a direct um, point of contact for our patients so um, whenever they um, present to us in clinic, we look at them from a holistic um, point of view. Our patients need a multidisciplinary team approach. Um, it's not just seeing the medical officer and you know getting them onto um, medication, so to speak. Um, we're constantly referring to try and make these patients um, be able to better function and have improve their quality of life. We also provide a uh a support with regards to palliative care. This is a devastating disease. People go from being fully functional, active people within a couple of years to not being able to breathe, not being able to get out of a chair. Um, it's very difficult for their partners to sit by and watch. And previously up until the novel therapies, um, we haven't had anything to help them. We're going to be able to get a very detailed picture of the processes that drive fibrosis. It's basically a single layer of epithelial cells sitting on a very thin uh, connective tissue basement membrane and then a layer of fibroblasts which are the cells that make that connective tissue. What happens we think, and I stress we think, is that there is a microscopic series of injuries to those epithelial cells that causes a, a wound response that just doesn't stop. And so we're interested in the signals that keep the fibroblasts alive and keep them secreting the connective tissue. The, what we're going to need, and the only way we can do this, is to get the tissue from those affected patients to study those mechanisms. Because looking at isolated cells in a dish or looking at uh, preclinical models will only take us so far. To actually study the disease and get a handle on what's causing the disease, we need to, uh, to engage our patients as partners and then really uh, use, the, use the tissue that they donate to its maximal capacity. I would like to think that we could repurpose existing drugs and that's certainly something that we're trialling and thinking of here all the time. Um, but I'm also not ruling out completely new pathways and therefore completely new uh, therapeutic options that will be available to us.